All right, so I'm just going to pray, and then we're going to start with a song to get started, to really get the blood flowing. Hi. And then I'm going to just give a short word, and then we're going to sing a couple more songs. So y'all just, I invite y'all, turn up that volume, worship with us. All right, so let's pray. Father, thank you for today. This is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, you are good, you are holy, you are faithful. And right now we just declare who you are and we rest on who you are. And God, we just um, pray that you would open our hearts, our minds, our ears, our eyes to see you for who you are, to hear your word, that you would strengthen us, fill us with your presence, your strength, your peace. You are faithful, Lord, and we love you. And we pray that you'll bless this time that we have and that you'll bless all that uh, join with us in worshiping you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Without wars, let me walk. 
my soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours And you are mine Oh, oh, oh. oh. message, God. Pray, Father, that um, you would anoint Charles, God, as he speaks. Pray that you would give him the words to say, Lord. Um, we just pray for everyone that's watching, Lord, that they um, would be receptive to your word, God. We say thank you for what you've done for us, Lord. We give you all honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Woo! That was dope, right? All right. So I know y'all don't want to see me and y'all probably crying right now, but it's going to be quick, but I got a word I want to share with y'all and, um, and then we're going to sing two more songs or we'll see what happens, but we're going to, I want to end with worship because really the message that the, what God's put on my heart is about worship, about praise. Um, number one, we worship God. We praise him, we give him praise, and we worship him um, because he deserves it. You know, we were created to worship him. And <clears throat> he's holy, he's perfect, he's faithful. And whenever we worship, it, it simply it comes from the word worship, meaning like to give something worth. Like when, so when we, when we worship God, when we lift up his name, um, you're, we're simply, and we do, it's not just with, with, with song or music, but through, uh, we worship him with everything we do. Um, but when we do that, we're ascribing him, we're ascribing the worth to him, to his name. Like we're giving him what he's worth, you know, like ascribing worth to his name. And, um, and that's just, that's what he deserves. And that's what we were created to do. So, I want to share this really cool story. Uh, oh, so number one, I want to read a, a couple before I get to that. Psalm 22, verse 3. This is one of my favorite past, uh, for, one of my favorite verses. It says, but you are holy and throned on the praises of, of Israel. Uh, other versions say you inhabit the praises of your people or you dwell um, in, the present, in the praises of your people. Simply meaning like when we worship God. When we lift up praises to his name, it's like he literally comes and lives. He dwells. He inhabits the praises of his people. So it's almost like whenever we praise him, when we worship him, whether we're in our homes, whether we're at church, whether we're at our jobs, whether we're with family, whether we're just, you know, chilling, you know, driving, whatever it may be, whatever we're doing, when we worship and praise his name, it's like we're literally making a home for God to come and live in, to dwell in. And that's amazing. So here's the thing. If we want God to invade our situation, our life, wherever we are, good, bad, doesn't matter. If we want God to come and invade where we are, we praise him, we worship him, and he comes and he comes and he fills that space and he invades the space we're in to transform, to change, whatever. I mean, you know, when God shows up, that's all we need, right? When when Jesus walks into a room, the whole situation changes because of who he is. Death, sickness, whatever, it's not even a, a it's not an obstacle to Jesus, you know? So we want him to be where we are and we want to praise him and we want to worship him because that, allows him that's like the avenue by which he comes into our situation so if you want him in your situation praise his name worship him whether you're by yourself whether you're with your family friends whatever spend some time worshiping him because it's so important and um and so there's a story in second chronicles uh chapter 20 about king jehoshaphat it's a funny name uh, i kind of like it though king jehoshaphat is king of judah and so he comes into this big dilemma whenever all of a sudden these people come to fight against him. And so we pick up in Second Chronicles 
chapter 20. Verse 1, it says, After this, the, Moabite, the Moabites, the Ammonites, together with some of the Meunites and some termites, no, I'm playing, I always like to throw in that, came to fight against Jehoshaphat. People came and told Jehoshaphat, A vast number from beyond the Dead Sea and from Edom has come to fight against you. They are already in Hezazon Tamar, that is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat was afraid and resolved to seek the Lord. And so basically, um, when I was reading, some people said there's like at least two million of them that come against them because of how many people they had. And they said their, their numbers were way more than the other numbers. So anyways, and whatever it was, they had a, the, these people that came against Jehoshaphat to defeat him and to, um, to just demolish them. They were way more than the people they had. They were completely outnumbered. And on paper, it was an impossible situation. Impossible. Like it was certain defeat. There was nothing they could do in, their, in themselves to change that situation. Logic says they're going to all die and get defeated by these ites. And so naturally, it says in verse 3, Jehoshaphat was afraid. But here is the big difference right here, okay? This is the big difference, and this is what we've got to do. It said Jehoshaphat was afraid, and he resolved to seek the Lord. So his response when he became afraid, whenever this situation that seemed impossible came against him and his people, he was afraid. But his answer to that in that moment was to seek the Lord. And when we say that, we know that's the right answer, but we don't do it most of the time, you know? Like, no matter what's going on in the world, whether it's good, whether it's paused. Okay, we're back. No matter what's happening in the world, no matter what's happening in your life, whether good, whether bad, we should seek the Lord. That's the answer. That's, that's all we need. And so he's the one that's going to direct our path. He's the one that we need his strength. Um, there is a passage. I'm probably jumping the gun. I, I don't think I wanted to read this one this soon. Um, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. For though we live in the body, we do not wage war in an unspiritual way, since the weapons of our warfare are not worldly, but are powerful through God for the demolition of strongholds. We demolish arguments and Every high-minded thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God, taking every thought captive to obey Christ. And we are ready. And so, but the, the thing is there, for we, though we live in the body, we don't wage war in an unspiritual way. So that a lot of things that we happen, in, and, if you, and if you read Ephesians 6, it says, uh, for our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, authorities, you know, the enemies, the, the, these unseen forces. That's what our, so whenever you have like something, uh, a problem with something, or you got this situation, it's not a physical problem. It may, it may come into that, but it doesn't start there. It's just always, it's a spiritual, and that's how we fight, and that's how we battle, that's how we win. But a lot of times we're trying to fight in battles, and we're trying to uh, deal with situations we're going through with our flesh. And when we do that, a lot of times we just start wearing ourselves out because we don't have the strength to defeat what's really behind it. And so then it says, then he proclaimed a fast for all Judah who gathered to seek the Lord. Then even they even came from all the cities of Judah to seek him. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah in Jerusalem of the Lord's temple before the new courtyard. He said, Yahweh, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kings of the nations? Power and might are in your hand. No one else can stand against you. They can stand against us. You know, just in our flesh, but they can't stand against God. That's why we battle. We don't battle with our flesh, but we do it in a spiritual way with His strength. When we do that, it's un we're unstoppable. Are you not God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and who gave it forever to the sins of Abraham? And so now He's remembering God's faithfulness and God's power, God's provision, how time and time in past He's came through to give them victory when it seemed impossible. Uh, and miracle after miracle, and he did what he said he was going to do. God is faithful, and that's what we got to remember. God is faithful, and we're going to get to that in just a second at the very end. And if, if you just go down in, um, to verse—I'll just go down to verse 10. 
Now here are the Ammonites, the Moabites, and the, and the inhabitants of Mount Seir. You did not let Israel invade them when Israel came out of the land of Egypt, but Israel turned away from them and did not destroy them. Look how they repay us by coming to drive us out of your possession that you gave us. So here's the deal. So this possession that God gave them, these enemies are coming to force them out. And so a lot of times, even like spiritually, whenever we start to gain ground and we start to really seek, pursue God, sometimes we'll have this resistance that comes because the enemy is just not going to just let you just, you know, pursue God like, you know, just give it over. Or whenever we try to advance the kingdom of God, no matter where you are, if you go into another country, you're doing it in your own city, you're doing it in your own house. When you're trying to advance the kingdom of God, you're going to have some resistance, but that's okay because we have a God who's all powerful. And so... You have an enemy, though, that we cannot see that wants to destroy us, right? The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so we have to remember when, when this happens, we shouldn't be surprised, you know, whenever we have some resistance. But we need to stand firm and remember God's faithfulness, God's power, and we need to fight correctly. Because if we don't, the enemy's going to easily drive us back. But when we stand firm and we seek the Lord and we worship Him, we fight in his strength. Psh, we stand firm. It's, it's, it's legit. All right. And then here we go. Check this out. Our God, will you not judge them? For we are powerless. Here, here, here we go. We are powerless before this vast number that comes to fight against us. We do not know what to do, but we look to you. And so here's the deal. As, as they were, you know, we were worshiping and we were praying God hit me with this simple revelation. No matter what situation you're in, like in this present situation we're in right now, which is, of course, um, causing a lot of change than to our normal lives. But here's the deal is God knows the answer. You know, God has a solution to every single problem. There's nothing that's going to happen that's going to catch God off guard like, oh, snap. Didn't see that coming. I'm not sure how I'm going to deal with that. The truth is God is, is all-knowing, God's all-powerful, and he has an answer to every problem. He has a solution to every problem, and he's just looking for people that will, that will come and seek him so that he can give us the answer. We can advance the kingdom of God. We can, we can uh, glorify God in whatever situation we're in. And when we do that, that's when heaven touches earth. So in good, bad, whatever, we need to seek the Lord and see what he wants to do. Like, God, what are you doing right now? What do you want to do? What do you and how do you want me to be a part of what you're doing? When we do that, that's when we see heaven coming to earth and things change. So to end, it says uh, all Judah was standing before the Lord with their infants, their wives, their children. In the middle of the congregation, the spirit of the Lord came on Jehaziel son of Zechariah, son of Benai, son of, I don't know if I'm saying these right, but you know, Jael, son of Matania, a Levite from Asaph's descent. This is cool. A Levite from Asaph's descendants, just a little tidbit. Um, psalm 73 was the psalm today from um, the one year reading. So it's a psalm of Asaph. Asaph wrote today's psalm. And this, this guy right here, Jehaziel, the, who the Spirit of the Lord is coming upon to speak what his answer to the people because right now they're like coming before God saying, God, what do you want us to do? We seek you. We don't, we, we don't have the power to do, you know, to fight these people, but you do. So we just seek you. They came and they just asked God for help. And the Spirit of God came on Jehaziel, who's a descendant of Asaph, who wrote today. And, and y'all should, if you haven't already, read Psalm 73. Um, it's one of my favorite chapters in the entire Bible. It's so real and it's so powerful. Psalm 73, it was today's psalm from the one you're reading. Back to end it. Okay, <laughs> so the Spirit of the Lord came on this dude and he starts speaking what God's put on his heart. Here we go. And he said, listen carefully, all Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat. This is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast number for the battle is not yours, but God's. And so that's amazing, first of all. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Whatever situation you're in, whatever circumstance you're in, whether small, whether big, whatever, don't be afraid or discouraged. Even whenever it seems impossible, even when there's like it seems like everything is against us. Because it says the battle is not yours, but God's. That's legit. 
Now here, this is what, this is his answer. Ready? Tomorrow, go down against them. You will see them coming up the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the valley facing the wilderness of Jeruel. You do not have to fight this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. He is with you. That alone is powerful. He is with you. Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid or discouraged. Tomorrow, go out to face them, for Yahweh is with you. Then Jehoshaphat bowed with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before the Lord to worship him. Whoa. They fell down to worship him. Then the Levites from the sons of the Kohathites and the Korahites, gosh, these words, stood up. Listen, this is crazy. Stood up to praise the Lord of Israel, the Lord God of Israel, shouting with a loud voice. So they all came together, stood up, and they just praised the Lord God of Israel, shouting with a loud voice. And in the morning, got up early and went out to the wilderness of Tekoa as they were about to go out. Okay, let me just get to the end of this. Um, they kept going. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, here we go. Believe in Yahweh your God and you will be established. Be, believe in Yahweh your God and you will be established. You'll be strong. You'll be firm. Your, your feet will be secure. Believe in his prophets and you will succeed. Then he consulted with the people and appointed some to sing for the Lord and some to praise the splendor of his holiness. When they went out in front of the armed forces, so these, these worshipers went out in front of the army and they were just armed with their voice. Like, you know, that's, isn't that crazy? They, they went before the army to sing and to praise. They went out in front of the armed forces. They kept singing. And this is what they were singing. Give thanks to the Lord. For his faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for his faithful love endures forever. The moment they began their shouts and praises, the Lord set an ambush against the Ammonites, Moabites, and the inhabitants of Mount Seir who came to fight against Judah, and they were defeated. Is that legit? The Ammonites and Moabites turned against the inhabitants of Mount Seir and completely annihilated them. They started fighting each other. And when they had finished with the inhabitants of Seir, they helped destroy each other. What? When Judah came, when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, they looked for the large army, but there were only corpses lying on the ground. So when they came, they finally looked and they're like trying to see, you know, what's left or what's going on or the army that's facing them. And all they see is dead bodies. Lying on the ground. Nobody had escaped. Then Jehoshaphat and his people went to gather the plunder. They found among them an abundance of goods on the bodies and valuables items. So they stripped them until nobody could carry no more. They were gathering the plunder for three days. For three days because there was so much. So not only did God go before them and annihilate their enemies that were coming to destroy them. But then they were blessed with so much more that they didn't have before. So... All they did was they stood still, acknowledged God's presence, remembered who he was, and they worshiped him. You know, if we, if we would just seek the Lord and ask him, God, what are you doing right now? What are you doing right now in the city, in the state, in this country, in this nation? And how do you want me to be a part of it? And if we would just do that, if we would posture ourselves like that, he would, he would bring us in to what he's doing and we get to be a part of transforming this world and bringing heaven to earth. One of the last uh, uh, passages I want to read is John chapter 4, and then we're going to sing. We're going to praise. We're going to worship together because he inhabits the praises of his people. That's how we fight. This is really cool. John chapter 4. Uh, verse 23, this is Jesus talking. He says, but an hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Yes, the Father wants such people to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. You know what I love about that right there? <coughs> is that it says the Father wants such people to worship him. He's looking for people to worship him in spirit and truth. And for those people that come, that, that give their time and say, I'm going to worship you, God, he's going to come and invade 
our situation, our hearts, our minds, transform us, give us peace, give us strength. I'm gonna tell you right now what we need more than anything, we just need the presence of God. That's all we need. And it doesn't matter what's going on if we have God with us, right? So we need to remember that he is with us because Jesus, because of his death, because he came to live a life we couldn't live, he paid the price that we deserve to, to pay. He gave his life on the cross. He was buried three days. And then he rose from the grave, defeating sin, defeating death for us. He's won the battle, the greatest and biggest battle that there is. That was the sin that separated us from God that we could do nothing about. Jesus came and, and won the battle, won the war. He already did it for us. And all we have to do is believe and put our faith in him and just worship him. And so he's looking for people that will worship him, that will acknowledge him for who he is, and that's willing to let him use us. And God wants to use you. God wants to use you to, to transform your family, to transform your friends, your neighborhood, your neighbor. I mean, everything. Like God wants to use you. God has so many amazing plans for you. And if we would just seek him and let him use us, there's no telling what he can do through us. But if we don't seek him and we just kind of wallow and just do whatever we want to do, we're just going to become part of the problem and not the solution. So um, I hope that encourages you. I hope that strengthens you because um, the Lord is good and he's doing something amazing right now. If we would listen, if we would open our ears and we would open our eyes, God is doing something amazing right now. And there's an opportunity, a tremendous opportunity to, to do things differently, but so powerfully. God wants to use you in this time. And you were made for such a time as this. Like you were created and made in this season, in this time, not on accident, but on purpose. You are the solution and the answer that, that God has for so many problems in this world if we would just partner with him and let him use us. So I'm gonna pray and we're gonna worship and we're gonna praise Jesus, the King of Kings that won the battle, that came and died, took our place, that paid for every single sin that we would ever pay for so that we could have complete forgiveness and salvation in him. Father, we love you, we thank you. You are, you are so good and we are thankful, Father, for everything. Your, your love endures forever, God. You are faithful. You never fail us and you never will fail us. So Father, I pray that you help us stand firm on your truth, on who you are, God, and not on all the other stuff of the world that's sinking sand, but that we stand firm on you, Jesus. You are the rock of our salvation. We look to you and we just pray that you will strengthen us, fill us with your spirit, I pray for every person watching and every person that's going to watch that you would invade their space, that you would come right now so just just tangibly and, and, and you would just come and you would touch them. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would touch every single person, every heart, every mind, that you would strengthen them, that you would just surround them and wrap them in your love right now. And, and whenever you come, God, you, you bring so much peace. And that's what we need right now, God, just to know you are near. We love you and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathe your life in me. You have been so, so kind.
Father God, we love you so much. And we know that your presence is what we seek. Your presence is what we need. Thank you, God, for loving us. Not because of who we are, but because of who you are. You are faithful. You are good. You are holy. And we just worship you. We just lift up your holy name, Jesus. I pray that you will continue to touch lives of youth, leaders, parents, siblings, neighbors, so many people that are hurting, so many people that are lost, so many people that just need you. I pray, Holy Spirit, you continue to touch Continue to move in, in all these people's life, God. And let us be your burning ones. 
that burn for you, for your glory, and for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank y'all so much for um, for joining us. Y'all are the bombs.coms. Tori stayed the whole time. Some other people too, but I don't know some of y'all's names. Hey, uh, thank y'all, Daniel and Sabrina, for leading us in worship. It was much better with some live worship. Thank y'all for worshiping with us. And uh, we're going to have more of this coming soon. So, love y'all. Y'all stay good out there. Social distance, quarantine, all that good stuff. Hey, hey, <laughs> that was amazing. They said that was amazing. That was, it was really good, man. Hey, I need it. I don't know about y'all or y'all, but I needed this. You know what I'm saying? Like, is this just getting out of routines and stuff has kind of been, at first it was cool, and then it was like, okay. And it's so easy to get, like, bummed out and just, you know, because you're just in your house and I don't know. I don't know what everybody's situations are like, but I needed this. This was good for the soul. Yeah. Oh, that's your mom. That's cool. Hey, mama. So anyways, hey, love y'all. Y'all have a blessed week. And um, just continue seeking the Lord wherever you're at, whether it's at home, at work, with family, by yourself. Seek the Lord. Let him use you. Let him step into your situation and transform it all because we know what we need to fight in his strength and not ours. God is good and God's got a plan and God is doing something amazing. Love y'all. Peace out.